Hello and welcome to Faith Hub. I'm sincerely very grateful for you that you are able to make it today. I know that the blessing of the Lord will remain and even abound even concerning you. I want to encourage you, whatever it is you are going to, I want you to know that this too shall come to pass. It might be tough, it might even be easy, but I know that the part of the just has the shining light. It shines more and more even onto the perfect day. If this is your first time on our channels, Mixellar on YouTube, I'd like you to subscribe to our channel. I'd like you to also click the notification bell so that whenever we have new um, stuff, you would get notified. I'd like you to know that we always release faith-inspiring messages that will bless you, transform you, and help you work in the realities even of the finished works, even of Christ. Uh, amen. Right? Also, do me a favor, share this link with your friend, with your colleague, let them know that faith of us started right i have a word from god today that i'm sure will bless you but before we go there i would like to say happy new month is the first day of the month and i'm super excited at what the lord has in store even for february Pre february is pregnant even with god possibilities and i want to say welcome to supernatural living god has said to us specifically as a people and the lord bible says concerning him when we believe the lord our god we are established we believe his prophet then we we'll prosper according to second chronicles 20 and then verse 20. i want you to know and understand that the lord has said this is our time to reign that's the word for this month our time to reign and that will have even um something to do with what i want to begin to share with you for the next few weeks uh, i want to put into your hands certain things uh, keys uh, that you find from the book of the beginnings uh, that tells on how man is supposed to operate uh, and will also tell on how your outcomes uh, will look like the bible says in revelation chapter 5 and then verse 10 scripture says he has made us kings and priests to our god and we shall reign on the earth it's our month to reign and i want you to say and i want to say to you welcome even to reigning hallelujah i have a word from god that will bless you and i'm super excited about this word because i know that this word will bless you it will set you on the right course and we have two readings today two readings very quickly like i said before the book of the beginnings genesis chapter one and then we read verses 26 to 28 genesis 1 and then 26 to 28. Uh, I want to show you something here that will tell how man is supposed to function. 26 to 28, and then we read Romans chapter 5, uh, and then verse 17. Can we begin from the book of the beginnings? The Bible says, uh, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let him have dominion, underline that word dominion, over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth. That's a strategic word. Over all the heart. The dominion of man should be over all the heart and over every creeping thing that creeps on the heart. So if there's something on the heart, uh, then it's under the dominion of man. Bible says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created Eden. Male and female, he created them. Then verse 28 says, then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the heart and subdue it. So God did not only have a plan that man have dominion, Scripture says after he made man, he also released man by the blessedness of his word, even, even to dominion. The Bible said, be fruitful, multiply. Then fill the earth, subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the hair, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. You will see that on the three-dimensional word, on the three words of man, God gave man dominion. In the sea, dominion. In the hair, dominion. And on the land dominion. Very quickly, let's go to Revelation chapter. I say Revelation, Romans, Romans chapter five. Hallelujah, Romans chapter five, and this is very good. This is good stuff. Romans five, and then we read verse seventeen. Bible says, "For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, all right, who is the one man's offense? One man's offense that speaks about Adam, the sin of Adam. Scripture says through one man's offense. So we could say through Adam's offense." Death reigned through the one. That means that everyone had to go through death because Adam had sinned. That was his offense. And so the, just the, 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 the resultant event of, that, of his sin was that death came. Bible now says much more those who receive. So there is now the lot of those who are under Adamic nature. And the Bible is now talking about another set of people, another kind of people. 
Scripture says, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign, will reign in life through one Jesus Christ. Uh, so scripture says there is reigning for the believer who believes in Christ Jesus. Today, for a few minutes, I would like to share with you what I have titled Taking Dominion. Help me look at your neighbor if you are watching with somebody or if you are just alone, you can shout it to yourself. Say, Taking Dominion. Taking dominion. Father, thank you. Because the entrance of the word we give light, give understanding to us are simple folks. Father, we've come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue depend on every writer. And I write the word of life upon the spirit of men. After now, make us better people. In Jesus' name and amen. I'm speaking on taking dominion. Listen, dear friends, God's word is guaranteed. God's word will never claim that you have something that you never have. Neither will God's word claim that you are something that you are not. God's word reveals the character of God. For everything that God says is true and sure. He means what he says and he says what he means. With God, there are no hypocrisies. God is not an hypocrite. God only says what he means. God doesn't also change his mind. So he doesn't say a thing and then says, no, that's not what I meant. Understand that? When God says, behold, I give you power. Luke chapter 10 verse 19, he gave man power. When he said it, power was released unto man. It's because power is given. And he says, let them have dominion like we read in Genesis 1, 26 and 28. Uh, it's because dominion has been released to us. Going God says, reign in life through Christ Jesus, Romans chapter 5, verse 17. It is because we have been empowered to do so. God's word is God already equipping for us. Understand that what you read in scriptures... Uh, is your possibilities. What you read in scriptures is what you have the possibility to do, right? So when a manufacturer of a generator is manufacturing, it manufactures in such a way that the generator is able to power or supply power even to a house. Even in a residual state, uh, in a state where he's not put to work, he still have it. Why? He tells you that he has that possibility. The same thing, whenever scripture says a thing as it concerns the believer, he's saying that the believer has the possibility for these things. Uh, equipped in the spirit of a believer are endless possibilities. And that's one of the possibilities I'm sharing with you today. God's word is not a maybe. God's word is a sure thing. There is a certainty as it concerns the word of God. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 19, he said we have the sure, more sure word of prophecy. We have a more sure word of prophecy. He said, which we should take heed unto. He said, unto the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. There, there, is, there is yet the prophetic word. The word of the Lord is forever settled. And that's what the Bible says in Psalms 119 verse 89. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled. Is settled. God is not a man that he should lie. Numbers 23 verse 19. Now the son of man that he should repent as he said he will he not do it as he promised won't he make it good? Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18, scripture says, out of two immutable things of which it is impossible for Jehovah even to lie. I love Titus chapter 1 and then verse 2. Scripture says, God who cannot lie. So the word of the Lord is settled. The word of the Lord is sure. So when God says, let them have dominion, God is speaking. He said, let us make man and then they have dominion. And then after he had made man, the Bible says, he released the blessing upon man and the blessing was sure. He says, subdue the earth. He says, have dominion over everything on the earth. God is not saying this because he had nothing better to say. He's saying this because this is his commandment. And in this time of reigning, we must understand the word dominion. And that's why I want to take us on that journey so that you understand every facet of dominion. You understand that dominion is a lifestyle. It's something you're supposed to live in even on a daily basis. Dominion is therefore not man dependent. It is God dependent. It is dependent on he who has promised. He has said it. You know, God does not put us on a pedestal and then lifts up and then remove the thing and then we fall crashing down. No, God actually will say a thing and will back it up. God backs it up. He guarantees us dominion. He's standing with his word. Second Corinthians 1 verse 20. Scripture says the word of the Lord, the promise of God. It will be a yes. And in him, amen. In him, amen. Oh, Hebrews chapter 6, he was speaking to Abraham. He says, surely in blessing, I will bless you. Begin to read from verse 13. He says, in blessings, I will bless you. Can I say to somebody that in dominion, you will have dominion? That's the plan of God. That's the promise of God. Whatever he has says, God is able to make it come to pass. What should we do, therefore? 
We must have the character of Abraham. Bible says concerning Abraham, uh, in the book of uh, Romans chapter 4 and then verse 20, he did not stagger at the promise of God, but he was strong in faith. Uh, you see, to have dominion, you must be strong in faith. You must believe that whatever he says, he is able to also perform. God does not lie. I understand that. So dominion is something he has promised to us. Dominion is something that he has promised to us. But I feel at this point, at this juncture, I should tell you the story of dominion. Listen, dear friend, there has always been a struggle concerning reigning on the earth. There's always been a struggle concerning dominion on the earth. The struggle is the struggle of dominion between the devil and man or concerning who is going to have dominion on the earth. So what we are talking about is so strategic because the devil is interested. Or he's so strategic because this is how you win. This is how you reign. You first of all must come with an understanding that there has always been a struggle on the heart concerning who has dominion. And that struggle is between man and the devil. No, sir. It's not between God and the devil. No one struggles with God. God is on his class. God is in his own class. God does no, there's no one who can struggle with him, including the devil. Understand that? But you see, the struggle of dominion has been from the very beginning. From the very beginning. And the dominion is who is going to reign on the heart. Who has the supreme power on the heart? You see, the struggle is about whoever controls. Who controls the systems of the world. That's what, the, that's what it's about. Because, you see, there must be an understanding you must have. That whoever controls the systems of the world, controls the people of the world. Whoever controls the system. So, the devil understands that if I can control the system, I can control the people. There is a battle going on in America now about evangelicals. Evangelicals no longer trust the media, the media, the U.S. media, as it concerns their reportage. Why? Because that place, that institution has been taken over by woke people. Therefore, there are certain conversations. They, they make it look like it's good to be this, good to be, uh, to be a, a, a gay, good to be homosexual. And there are certain things that they do no longer report. They, know, they no longer report. They don't want the Bible in the, in the school anymore. They have taken that away. They don't want people to live by the dictate of scriptures. They have taken God out of the conversation. And you know, these people, wow, did the devil take over this dominion? It's very simple. He knew that if we could control the system, he can control the people. Whoever controls the mass media controls the people. Because you see, the media is what the people listen to. It's where they get information. So if you can control that, then you can also control the mind of the people. And that's what goes on even in our country. Uh, you know, there are certain information, certain war, certain news that you never hear in the news. Why? Because some people control the news. You will say, oh, informal government, these things are there, but it seems like in this government you never hear anything like that. It's because whoever controls the media can control the people. So you see, the devil controls things. He knows this is how to reign. If I can control the system, I can control the people. If the devil controls the spiritual system over a place, over a place, he knows that he can make the people there to be subjected to him. If the devil controls the spiritual atmosphere in a location, in a locality, he understands in a house, in a family, he understands that the children of that family will be subjected to him. So the devil is more interested in control. He's more interested in influence. He's more interested in dominion. That is why when he came to the garden, he didn't come to visit them. He went straight for the jugular. He knew that there is a disobedience unto God's will that will make God to throw them away. Because the Bible says that the devil is not a stranger to God. We've known from scriptures, Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, that he's not a stranger to God. He had an understanding, and the understanding was peculiar. If these people will sin against God, then God will remove them from the place of authority. He will send them from his face. And if he could send them from his face, then... They will lose spiritual authority to rule, to reign, and to have fellowship with him, which is the very source of their dominion. Fellowship is the source of dominion. The devil understood this, so he came to the garden and he went straight for the juggler. He made them go, you know, he could have made them sin any other sin, maybe make any other mistake, but he, he made them go for the fruit of the knowledge. That's what he went for. He understood, he knew, and he went for dominion. 
God's original intent is that men live in dominion. He designed men to reign over the earth. Not over everyone, not over each other, but over the heart. God's plan is never that man be subjugated by any situation of forces on the earth. You are born to be in control. You are born to reign. You are designed to be in charge. We are designed to be in charge. But Satan, he knew what he was doing. Genesis 1, 26, 1, 28, like we started with, God gave dominion to man. But Genesis chapter 3, the fall of man, the devil received that. How do I know? Luke chapter 4, verse 6. Luke chapter 4, verse 6. I want to, I want to show you something there in Luke chapter 4, verse 6. I want you to follow me closely today. You know, I could have quoted that, but I want to show you something very, very, very important. There. That was the temptation of the Christ. That he was speaking with the devil. And the devil looked at him, and, and the Bible says in verse 5, the devil, and then the devil taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. He showed it in a moment of time. Look at this. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you, and their glory, for this has been delivered to me. I give it to whomever I wish. If the devil were lying in this scripture, then it would not have been a temptation. It wouldn't have been a temptation. And the response of the Christ would have been, devil, you are lying. But that wasn't the response of the Christ. He said, get thee behind me, for you shall worship the Lord your God alone. He was saying what he was saying was true. You see, what the devil was saying in that verse of scripture is very true. And as believers, if you want to understand the subject and concept of dominion, you must understand that first the devil has dominion over the earth. Now, how does he have this so much authority and glory? Scripture says, for this has been delivered to me. Actually, the literal Greek says, it has been handed over to me. That's what it means. And the control has been given to me. Who gave it to him? Adam. Because Adam had the control at first. But by saying Adam had delivered uh, the control to the devil. Listen, dear friends, you will never be in charge living in sin. You will never be in dominion living in sin. You will never reign as you ought to reign uh, living in sin. Oh, but thanks be to Jesus. Uh, thanks be to God. Scripture says on the cross, Jesus bought back what the devil took away from us. Therefore, therefore, Romans 5, verse 17, the Bible says, See, by one man's offense, death came. How much more shall we receive the gift, even of life and grace, reign in life, even by one man, one man, Jesus. By the obedience of the Christ on Calvary, by giving up himself and giving up his life, he has paid the price. And because of him, the Bible says, How much shall we reign in life through Christ Jesus? Therefore, dominion has been delivered to us. But let me say this to you. Dominion is not delivered to every man on the earth. Dominion is only delivered to the man in Christ. I need to say that again. Dominion is not delivered to every man on the earth. Dominion is delivered to the man in Christ. And therefore, what I'm sharing with you, taking dominion is very key. Somebody say, what is dominion? Let me explain that to you because you see, we're just doing introductions today. We're going to go deeper as, as this concept and this subject continue every Tuesday in the month of February. I'm just going to be sharing on dominion, on, on dominion. Let, let's go further here. What is dominion? Dominion means rule. It means authority. It means authority to govern. It means a sphere of influence, an area of control. The governor of your state uh, does not have authority when he moves and changes to another state. He can't he can tell them what to do. The governor of river states cannot go to a boy. Or go to a state that is close by. A state that is close by will be Abia. And then begin to say, ah, I begin to make laws in Abia state. He doesn't have the authority to do that. He doesn't have the right to do that. He couldn't ring there. All right? So it is power to govern. It means sovereign authority. Authority to act and to make rules. Authority to act and to make rules. That's what dominion is. It is the act or fact of ruling. The act or fact of ruling. He also speaks of jurisdiction. Which, like I said to you, the, 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 the state governor of, of River State cannot go to Abia State and then begin to make laws. He doesn't have the jurisdiction. That's the official power to make legal decisions or judgment. That's jurisdiction. Oh, so the president of Nigeria cannot go to Ghana 
and then begin to make decisions for them in Ghana. Why? Because she doesn't have the right. He doesn't have the legal right to make decisions or judgment in that place. What does that word dominion, what does it mean in Latin? It's the word dominium. Actually, that's where we coined the English word from. It's the word dominium. And what does it mean? It means ownership. Ownership. That's why I'm preaching on taking charge. God wants you to take ownership. You see, in dominion, it's about taking ownership. I tell people, first of all, the first place you must have dominion over is over yourself. It's over yourself. God is saying, take ownership of your life. No, no, sir. You are not where you are because of your parents. You are not where you are because of your background. You are where you are because of you. Therefore, the first thing you must do is to take ownership. Stop giving excuses for your failure. Stop blaming others for your outcomes. Listen to this. Take ownership of your life. That is the first thing about dominion. Dominion means to take responsibility. To take responsibility. To see that the rules set by God are followed on behalf. Take responsibility to live by the dictates of scriptures. God is saying, be kings over the heart. Be in charge. That's why I say, take dominion. God is saying, be in charge. Be in charge. He has made us kings and priests. Revelation to the 5 verse 10. He's saying, be kings on the heart. Be kings in your home. Be kings in your business. That's what the word dominion means in Latin. But unfortunately, when God gave this mandate to Adam, the rule keeper became the rule breaker. <laughs> he who was supposed to keep, keep the rule was the one who broke the rule. Adam was meant to keep, but he lost it. He lost ownership. The Hebrew word for dominion is the word radar. R-A-D-A-H, radar. Which means to bring to subjection, to dominate. Listen, the believer is not supposed to be ruled upon by demons and devils. Little one that Jesus was speaking. And I love the way Jesus put it. He said, behold, I give unto you authority. He said to tell us scorpions and serpents. And over every power of the enemy. To tread upon means they are underneath your feet. Jesus was sharing with us dominion here. He was saying, listen, subjugate them. You are not supposed to be subjected to them. They are supposed to be subjected to you. God's plan was that man be dominate things and not be dominated or subjected to things. But through disobedience, uh, through disobedience, God's will was frustrated on the heart by man. By man. Therefore, in Adam we lost all, but in Christ we gain all. Glory to God. What we lost in Adam, we gain much more in Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 28, 18, Matthew. He said, he said all powers in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. He said, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, uh, Scripture says he has made, he said he has made us. Uh, he has lead, the Bible says he leads us in triumph uh, and make manifest to us the savour, the fragrance. That's what the transition says. Uh, a fragrance of his knowledge in every place. So that wherever you go, there is a sweet perfume of the Christ. Uh, there is the fragrance of reigning and of dominion. Listen, when we talk about the sweet fragrance of Christ, you cannot have the sweet fragrance of Christ when you are subjected to sickness. When you are subjected to sin, when you are subjected to pain. No, that's not how it works, sweetheart. That's not how it works. In Adam, we lost rulership of the heart. In Christ, we gain rulership. Not only of the heart, but even under the heart, we gain rulership. Hallelujah. The first Adam was defeated. And authority, dominion, and control was lost. But the last Adam restored much more than we need. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45 making a difference between the first Adam and the last Adam. Scripture says that the first Adam was a living being. But then the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. Hallelujah. A life-giving spirit. Jesus is a life-giving spirit. The most important thing that has ever happened to the world is not that now we can vote. It's not that now we have freedom of speech. It's not that there are all inspiring inventions. The most important thing that has happened to our world is that Jesus came. Is Christ. And no one is in true dominion who does not know Christ. I, I, let me say that to somebody again. No one. They may have money. <laughs> they may have companies. But no one is in true dominion who does not know Christ. The power to reign in life is invested in the person of the Christ. 
Money, fame, and wealth is not dominion. Dominion is the spiritual power to reign in life. That's what dominion is. It's the spiritual power to reign in life. And that's what Jesus gave to us. We have the spiritual power to reign in life. You can say no to whatever is contrary and against you. You can say no to negative patterns. You can say no to causes and diseases. You can say no because now you are a king. Because now you have spiritual authority to reign. No, it's not because you said no that it was, it's not going to work. No, it's because of the person who says no. The man in Christ saying no is a man that has been empowered to say no. The spirit of Christ is in you. As I close, I want you to note these things very quickly. Note these things very quickly as I close. Uh, very quickly. Number one, there is no vacuum when it comes to power and authority. If you don't take charge, someone else will. If you don't take charge, another spirit will. Take charge. We're talking about taking dominion. There is no vacuum. That's a spiritual law. There is no vacuum when it comes to power and authority. Over your life, there is no vacuum. Over your family, there's no vacuum. If your father is not born again, uh, it does not mean somebody else is not in dominion. A spirit, a power will be in dominion. So if you are not going to take charge of that family, even as a son, as a child in that house, if you are not going to take charge, somebody else will. Somebody else will. And that's it. There is no vacuum. I need you to put that at the forefront of your mind and your spirit, man, that there is no vacuum. In your place of work, there is no vacuum. If you have not taken charge, somebody else is already take, has, has already taken charge. You've got to go there and display those powers because you have been given power to reign. Somebody says, you know what? That will not work for you. That will not happen. And you start crying. Sweetheart. Crying won't change anything. Take charge. Taking dominion. That's what it means. Number two, there is no sphere of influence that will be left ungoverned. There is no sphere of influence that will be left ungoverned. If believers don't govern, unbelievers will. I remember many years ago, 1999, when, we, when there was a return to democracy in Nigeria, and many churches... And many churches, many churches began to say, listen, we, we, have, we have left that space. We have left that space. Politics is a dirty game. Politics is a dirty game. And before you know it, the devil, because you said it's a dirty game. The devil is not, you calling him dirty is not anything to him. The dirty devils have taken charge. Why? Because we told them he was dirty, so we left it for them. There is no sphere of influence that we live on government that, that will not be taken over by evil forces. If we don't take charge, others will. If we don't make declarations, devils and demons will reign supreme. Let, look at it. Look at, even in the entertainment world, even in mass media, the news, because believers have not taken it upon, their, upon themselves to start TV stations, to start radio stations and to put investment there, even if you don't call it a gospel TV station. Just the fact that it is run by a Christian means that you can defend the truth. But if we don't do that, some other people will come and sell lies as truth. And that's what we found out. We found out that there are many mass medias all over the world who can no longer say truth. Why? Because people have bought them over. People have taken charge of the boardrooms. And whoever pays the piper dictates the tune. We've got to understand that there is no sphere of influence, including, including entertainment, including the creative space, including drama, including music. If we don't take charge, people will take charge. There is no sphere of influence that will be left ungoverned. None. Number three, Jesus has given you all that you need. The question is, will you take it? The question is, will you use it? It's given you. It's given you. And then number four, our position is ultimately higher than that of the devil. Ephesians chapter 1 and then verse 21. Ephesians 1, 21. I, I want to read that to you so that you understand. You see, when people say it's the devil, is the devil. It's not the devil. It's the fact that we have not taken our space. And the law, the spiritual law, is that no sphere of influence can be left on God. So the devil will move with his people because you have left it ungoverned. You see, 
when the church believes that uh, there are no prosperity, that there, there is no prosperity gospel, church believes there are no signs, no miracles anymore, the devil is going to come in with his clowns. And because people are thirsty for the supernatural, he's going to keep doing miracles. But if we will step in and say, God, we find miracles in your word. We find the miraculous in your word. And we trust the Lord for it. And it is done. Then we will say that this is the genuine and this is the counterfeit. But in as much as we are not able to show our word what the genuine is, we do not have the right to talk about the counterfeit. That's how it works. That's how it works. So these are truths we need to understand. Ephesians chapter 1. I want to show you something there. The Bible says in verse 21. Let's start from verse 20 so that we understand it. The Bible says, which he walked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand. In the heavenly places. He seated Christ at his right hand in the heavenly places. Follow me very closely. And verse 21, he says, He's a far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age that is to come. So that when we talk about God the Father, there is no explanation or question as to how high he is. But the Bible says he has even put his son Above all the powers, dominions that are on the house. That's what he has done. That's what he has done. So that he is seated at his right hand in the heavenly places. Now listen to this. And then when you go to verse 2. And when you go to chapter 2, I beg your pardon. And then you read verse 6, 2, 6. Ephesians. The Bible says, and has raised us up together. Who are the us? Believers. Us there is believers. He has raised us up together. And made us sit together. In the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So you see, believers are seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You are far above devils and darkness. Spiritual position, far above. Far above. You have nothing. The devil, you see when we talk about the devil, is that we have not taken our space. We've not. If we're in a place, he can't send us down. Goliath came. And Goliath was shouting. And was shouting. For days, it was raining intimidating Israel. And they thought nobody could face Goliath. And that was how they thought. But listen to this. Listen to this. David came, a man small. A man small. A young boy. Like my daughter told me. One day I was speaking. I said, you know, David, uh, a man, the man David came. She said, no, daddy. You are wrong, sir. I said, how? He said, it's not a man. It's a boy. The boy David. You see, the boy David came. And men could not have a living dominion, but the boy who understood lived in dominion. Goliath will begin to reign in businesses, in our lives, everywhere, because we have not stood our place. It's time to stand up, to take charge. We are in constant battle with the world of darkness, and as much as we don't cave into them, we will defeat them. Listen, dear friend, nothing should subjugate the child of God. Nothing. You can reign over it. Listen. What is dom dominion again? Number six now. I believe, number six, I believe. Dominion principle I want to share again is that dominion means understanding that you can do what God said you can do, have what God said you have, and you can be what God said you can be. Look at that. Listen to that again. It's understanding that you can do what God said you can do. You can have what God said you have. And you can be what God say you can be. Dominion is about knowing who you are in Christ. And understanding that in him and through him, you can lay hold of the promises of God. Listen to this. Spiritual dominion. And I think that's number six. No, it's number seven. Now. Spiritual dominion falls under the auspices of God. It is only effectual and effective. When it is submitted to the will of God. You cannot live in spiritual dominion. The dominion I'm teaching. Biblical dominion. You can't live in dominion except you are submitted to the will of God. It's not something to, to run with. And say now I am a God to myself. No. It is the number. It is the level of our submission. That determines the level of our reigning in life. The more we submit to him the more we reign in life. And then number eight now. Remember that God does not empower us to rule over others. He empowers us to reign over forces. God's plan is not just that you have dominion in one area of your life. 
it is that you always live in dominion. And as I close today, my admonition is, be in charge. Take dominion in your health. Take charge. Take ownership. That's what dominion means. Take ownership. And Radha says, subjugate them. Subjugate. Is there anything in your life that has become a king over you? You can be your work. It might be relationship that has refused to work for many years. Whatever it is. I've come to announce to you that you are a king. Kings don't beg. They only make decrees. You have been put in, you have been restored into a position to reign. The question is, will you reign? Will you take charge? Have I equipped you with what you need? I've told you how we lost it and how we recovered it back. You see, the man in Christ has recovered dominion. The man in Christ is not subjugated to any force. No, not sickness. He can shake it away. Not sickness. No, not poverty. No, not stagnation. No, not pain. Nothing is impossible to him that believes. Sir. The man in Christ is unstoppable. Can you, will you stand on your feet wherever you are? Or will you stand uh, in your place spiritually and begin to cry out? Begin to cry out and say, Lord, I have dominion. Lord, I reign. And you don't just say it. Because you see, when we say, Lord, I have dominion. Lord, I reign. You are only telling God what he has said that you are. What you need to do is to begin to say, Lord, I reign over this. I reign over that. Lord, I reign and I put under every power of darkness that seeks to put me under. Begin to declare that. Begin to declare that. Oh, yes. Speak to stagnation. Speak to stagnation. Declare every strange and negative pattern. On this mountain, we remove them. You see, this is faith up. On this mountain, by faith, we remove them. When you declare it, it is so. It is so. It is so. It is so. Like Copa Capiri at the other house is who you are in Christ. That's why I tell people that the worst of us is better than the best the world has. Why? Because we have spiritual authority. Only us have dominion. Let me say this to you. The devil still reigns in the world, but the devil is not permitted to reign in the life of believers. If he's reigning, he has come in through the window. He doesn't have right. There is no jurisprudence for that. There's no jurisprudence for that. You can throw him out. You can send him out. You can cast him out. He's not supposed to be there. Use your judicial authority given to you by the Lord. <laughs> given to you by the Lord. Given to you by the governor of heaven and earth. Come on! Yes, I am fruitful. I reign over stagnation. I reign over stagnation. I am fruitful. I reign over barrenness. Come on, declare it. Declare it. No weapon formed against you prosper. Tongue lifted against you in judgment is hereby condemned by the power in the name of Jesus. Save Akia Katura. And your head is supposed to be above, not beneath. Declare, I'm above. I am possible. In the name of Jesus, declare February, I am well. February money comes to me. We are at the bank of the year, of, of, of the month. We are also like on the bank of the year, the journey to 2024 has started. But listen to this, uh, if it was a one kilometer race, uh, we are just on the hundred meter mark. Uh, you can declare what you want to see. Uh, kings, I've told you, he has made you kings and priests with God that you may reign on the altar. According to Revelation 5 verse 10, somebody began to declare, I reign. Money comes to me. Those who do not know me, they send money to me. From far from there, I receive money. The project of the Lord in my hand does not stop. It keeps going forward. We receive favor from far and from near. People come to our rising. Grace is upon us. Favor is upon me. In the name of Jesus. Wherever I go, I see favor. In the name of Jesus, I declare grace upon grace. On my business, on my CV. You want a new job? Declare it. Lord, I'm standing up on this side. You can say it to God, but it's time to declare. 
Just say it in the name of Jesus. I've stayed enough on this side. I go forward. I go forward. I go forward. A deeper level of spiritual understanding. A deeper realm of spiritual authority. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody say, Lord, I expand in my governmental authority. I expand in my dominion. I expand in the name of Jesus. There is the mark of heaven upon you. In this month, you reign. God has said it is your time to reign. Somebody finally begin to declare, it's my time to reign, I reign. It's my time to reign, I reign. I speak to seasons and time. And I say, begin to condition yourself for my dominion. In the name of Jesus, every day of this month, I'm in authority. I'm in charge. I'm in charge. I'm in charge. God has given me rather. I have dominion. I am in charge. <laughs> I am in charge. No, the devil is not in charge. You are in charge. Wherever you get to, even if the devil was in charge before, because you step in, you are in charge. Wherever the soul of your feet shall get to, Bible says you receive an inheritance. You are in charge. You are in charge. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, we worship you. Daddy, we exalt you. In Jesus' name, and amen, and amen. And that's it for today. Next week, we're going to go further on born to reign. I want to share with you another principle as concerns dominion. You know, today was just about definitions. Today was just setting the foundation. I just want to set the foundation. But I'm going to begin to build on it from, from next week. And it's going to do you good. I don't want to miss any of our services this February. Uh, on our Sunday service, we'll be talking about the subject of love. Right, but as it concerns our midweek services, we're going to look at dominion, reigning, being in charge, uh, and you know there is that thing about you. You are born to reign. I want to show you how you can reign because you are born to reign. A born again believer, the Lord told me this morning. He said, uh, "It is not those who are born of the water and of the blood that are born to reign." He said, "It is those who are born of my spirit that are born to reign." I love that. If you are born again, understand of my voice. Good news, you are born to reign. I see you again next week. Don't forget if you are in the city of it's <laughs> don't forget if you are in the city of Lagos. This Sunday is gonna be amazing. Come into the building. Online service is not is a service, it's not church. Come and meet with the ecclesia of God. Bible says, do not forsake the assembly together. Oh, of ourselves together as the manner of some. Meaning, some people will not choose church, but you must choose church. Hey, why is person? You must choose church. It's going to be amazing in service this Sunday. I'm starting a series on love and relationship. We're going to start with wealthy relationships. Lord gave me certain things. I want to put those nuggets into you. Give it to you for your life to run with, to walk with. It's going to bless you. It's going to be an amazing time in God's presence. Don't forget number 22, Isaac Alukolo, Kunshu, Naira Bet Head Office. Igwef from Lekki, there's a hall inside that building where we meet. Uh, and oh, the Lord will do you good at your fellowship with us. Uh, I know it's been an amazing time in God's presence. I'll see you again, even next Sunday. Cheers. <laughs>